Well, the rankings for the college football playoffs are here. We do have our one through four. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co-host, Steve Feck, and we're going to break down the college football playoff selection. We got four teams in, and honestly, I think they got them right, Steve. Before we talk about the teams in here, do you have any gripes about what we have with this one through four here? I think they got the teams right. Uh, I'm still a little iffy on Ohio State. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to hear your thoughts on that in a sec here. I just wanted to get your reaction and we're going to debate that because I think I have um, a good argument for that one. So that's why I stopped you here. Um, So we'll get to Ohio State at the end because they are the four seed. So first, let's swivel over. By the way, while you're there, thank you so much. Hit like and subscribe and put some comments about your thoughts on these Mm -hmm. college football things. Steve, first, number one seed goes to Georgia, two Michigan, three TCU, four Ohio State. Let's start at the tippy top with Georgia. I think, honestly, between one and two could have went either way. I don't think it really mattered. I think, honestly, the committee kept Georgia at one because they didn't want to see Michigan and Ohio State play each other again. I'm going to be completely honest. I think that's what happened there. Now, you can make the argument that Georgia was the consensus number one the entire time and what they did to LSU this week, and I would not, I would not disagree with you whatsoever. Um, but if you really want to play semantics, you could say that Michigan beat a team that is in the college football playoffs already, and no other team has done that with the Michigan Ohio State win. Um, and then, you know, that's you could make that argument. I'm not going to do that, but I know people who have. I am okay with the rankings in this one. I think Georgia is going to be a very tough team to beat. They got to play Ohio State first. Stenson Bennett, Heisman, Heisman finalist right now. He's he's that dude. I know a lot of people are pretty angry about him being a finalist. I'm interested to see, you know, I do think Hendon Hooker belonged in that conversation. They did, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the process of the injuries. That's interesting. That's for another story. But Georgia, what we saw in that LSU game was immaculate. Now, there were some question marks on the defense a little bit. At some moments, there were some some flaws. But this team is really good, Steve. I think Georgia has a really good chance of going back to back. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're gonna go back to back, but we'll get to that a little later on too. But um I've been saying all year long, I want Georgia to show me, I want them to prove to me that they deserve to be number one and not just be riding what they did the previous year. I think at big times the Florida game, uh certainly in this game. Uh, I think they showed, okay, look, yes, we are this good. Just because maybe we're not, you know, trying to play our absolute max best game every single week doesn't mean that we're not capable of it. Maybe there's injuries that we that you don't know about, or maybe there's things that we're working on in practice that you know, we're still trying to work out off the field on, on Saturdays. So, I mean, I think Georgia earned that spot. I, I have I have no problems with them staying in that number one slot because because they proved it. You know, we all said, show me. They did. They showed us that they are the number one team in the country. Yep, I agree. I don't think there's an SEC bias in there whatsoever. I know people are going to tend to do that as well. Uh, but no, I don't think that's the case. Moving to number two, Michigan Wolverines. And I, again... We, we alluded to earlier, I think you could have put either one or two. Regardless, both of them had to be one or two. I think that's it's Georgia and Michigan, and then there's a deep line right now between the other two. That's just my thoughts. We can get to that in a minute. Um, however, with this Michigan team, there were some worries the last two games with the game against Ohio State and the game against Purdue. How would they fare without Blake Corum? in the lineup that has not seemed to be a worry whatsoever. Donovan Edwards has really filled the shoes. Honestly, he's, he's grown the shoes. He is, yeah. he's put in Blake Corum's shoes and he has definitely outgrown them already. I'm not saying that he's going to be the Blake Corum that they wish and hope for. It just shows that that team is doing fantastic in the running game. What Donovan Edwards has done in the last two games, he has rushed for 401 yards. That is the most in a two game span by a Michigan player since Denard Robinson in 2010 Mm. he is the most that he has done that in 12 years amazing after what we saw blake quorum who should have been in the heisman consideration as well barring the injury donovan edwards pops right into that conversation they look good uh throughout the game against purdue there were some little worries at the beginning of the game but they figured it just out i will say that there was some concerns on the opposite side of the ball for michigan against their rush defense i thought that purdue had a good shot 
I mean, it's Purdue's not really a team that likes to run the ball either, but they did a good job running the ball against Michigan. That could be a concern when they go against TCU, especially against what TCU has in that backfield. Um, yeah. So that's something just to keep in mind. However, I know I said that Georgia has a good chance at repeating. I'm going to say this out flat. I think Michigan is my favorite to win the whole damn thing this year, Steve. And I'm not sure I'm going to go there either. <laughs> that, that's, that's where I'm going. But yeah, what, no, I mean, I, I I think Michigan is is a very good, bordering on great football team. I don't know that they develop to the point that they're great. You know, you made some great points about Donovan Edwards. They're different backs. Corbin Edwards are different kinds of backs. Right. And they're still you know, both finding ways to see it with that offensive line and offensive style, which is amazing. Right. You know, and then it, I think that, you know, Edwards is finding those holes in, in different parts of the line. He's running maybe a little wider where Corb's going more, was always more up the middle. But still, if you can have a Blake Corm go down and really not miss a beat, that shows, that tells you a lot about the quality and the depth that that roster has. I would hate to think that Michigan got bumped out of the number one spot so they wouldn't have to play Ohio State. I, I you know, that's how I, the committee I, thinks, though. I mean, they do think that they, uh, there's something to keep in mind. I don't think that's the case. Honestly, I think it's more of the opposite direction. I think, and I know you're going to hate this conversation because you're skeptical about Ohio State. I think Ohio State's the four seed instead of the three seed because of that conversation, not the other way around. No, no, well, no, because I think Ohio State proved they were soft, soft <laughs> against Michigan. That was, that was one of the most embarrassing performances I have seen in a long time in a big game. And the fact that Ryan Day has not had to be hospitalized to be, be prevented from harming himself because of the coaching job he did in that game it is, you know, it's, it's amazing. But, uh, you know, I, and we'll get to TC here in a little bit, but no, but Michigan – at two, I would be more inclined to say Michigan will win the national title as opposed to uh, Georgia, but my pick is actually going to be TCU. Interesting, and that's who they have to face in round one. TCU, you have them winning the whole dang thing. They couldn't even get it done against Kansas State the second time around. Now, obviously, that's what kept them in it. It's actually really interesting. I, found, I heard a really good argument um, through uh, a few people saying that their loss – to Kansas State actually made their win better against Kansas mm -hmm. State. And that's actually what kept them in the college football playoffs is the fact that they beat a team like Kansas State. Uh, and then since they lost to Kansas State, Kansas State moved up to ninth in the final rankings, which helped their loss look a lot better. Interesting concept, but I think that's very true. When you look at the other teams who have losses, uh, like, for example, Alabama, who lost to LSU, who moved down to 17th in the ranking. You know, it's just something to keep in mind. That's how the committee thinks. That's what we've been told. And that's just a really interesting take. Um, TCU is a very good team. We've both been very high on TCU all year long. Michigan versus TCU is going to be a very good football game. Yes. A very good football game. Uh, out of the two games, that is going to be the game that if you can only pick one to watch, that's the one you should that's watch. Yep. Max Duggan, again, Heisman finalist. Amazing. Keandre Miller, fantastic runner. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind after we just saw them kind of struggle with Purdue's running game. Now it's only 90 yards that Purdue ran, but it, they were very important yards. Like the, if you looked at just the team stats, you wouldn't think that they struggled against the run, but if you go watch the game, they struggled against the run. Run. There were some moments that you really were like, this is not a Michigan defense. This is not what we've seen at some points in the time, and especially in a big 10 championship game. So there were some times it looked like they almost kind of took the brakes off. Right. So, um, just keep that in mind. But I do like TCU, and I, I do think this is a good game. However, I just don't know if they can get over the hump against a team like Michigan. Now, Big 12 has been a nasty conference all year long. Nasty conference. But so has the Big 10 uh, for the majority of it. It's just going to be a really tough game. Um, why do you have TCU as your national champion favorite? Sometimes you realize your potential by having a painful setback. I mean, no doubt – that that you know in that locker room there were some slumping shoulders but i don't think there were any hanging heads okay i mean kansas state really executed almost to perfection their game plan coming in and they just beat them 
you know, I mean, and then they realized that, you know, in overtime, you know, t- TCU let that game slip out of their control. You can take that as a lesson and learn from that. And then, you know, since Sonny Dyke seems to plan out every possible scenario ever, maybe he planned this out to lose so that his team could be motivated and know how to react and come back against the Michigan team. I, I just think that TCU is balanced enough that they can, um, that they can beat Michigan. I, I think they could show them enough things, both offensively and defensively that Michigan hasn't really seen yet. And I think it's just going to make, it's going to be a really close game, but I really think that TCU is going to beat Michigan. And I, and then once TCU beats Michigan, I, I don't, I don't think there's any question that they could beat the winner of Georgia and um, Ohio soft. You know, I, I I just don't think that that, that there's any uh, – I mean, this is the national championship game for all intents and purposes is Michigan TCU. That's an interesting take, and I, I like it. I'm not even I'm not mad at it. I, as a personal standpoint, I, I want whoever wins the Michigan TCU game to win the whole dang thing. That's just a personal standpoint of mine. However, I mean, I don't want to rule out the great season that Georgia's had. Um, I think I've been higher on them all year than you have. Now, we get to the fourth seed here with Ohio State. They find a way to sneak in after losing to Michigan. They ha- were sitting on their hands waiting for uh, USC to lose and TCU to lose. Well, TCU's loss really didn't mean anything in the case, but the USC loss was enough for Ohio State to jump back in. Before I get your argument, here's my thoughts on this take. One, if you look at every other team that is up for it, they have two losses. And that is honestly enough for me. Ohio State has one loss. And what we have seen Throughout the entire college football playoff history, there has not been a two-loss team to make it to the top four and make it to the playoffs. There has been some times where a two-loss team or a three-loss team will be above a team with less losses somewhere else in the rankings. Okay, let's talk about maybe 9-4 and LSU over number 25 UTSA, right? Something like Mm -hmm. that, Um, but not when it comes to the top four. Now, you number five is Alabama. Number six is Tennessee, which I do technically think those to be flipped because Tennessee beat Alabama. Um, but that's a whole different story because of the South Carolina blowout. That's probably why Tennessee was put down lower. The conversation why a lot of people think Alabama should make it in. The reason that I say no is one, because the two losses. Uh, and honestly, that is really the entire story. But if you wanted to keep it even Farther than that, let's look at the Michigan loss. Yes, it was a double-digit loss, but they lost to now the finals ranking number two team in the nation. Alabama lost to Tennessee, the sixth team in the nation, but also the 17th team in the nation. What is Ohio, what is Alabama's biggest win? Well, their biggest win this year is against Old Miss. Old Miss or Mississippi State. Mississippi State is ranked 22nd in the nation. Or Texas, 20th in the nation. Ohio State's biggest win is against Penn State, 11th in the nation. So if you want to play the apples and oranges game, Ohio State technically has a better win than Alabama, 11th ranked Penn State, and they have a better loss than Alabama, second ranked Michigan. Pretty interesting concept. That's why I have Ohio State and being okay with the committee putting them in. Uh, What's your thoughts on that one? Ohio State, for me, all year, just out flashed and out talented the opposition until they had their first real test. I I know Penn state's ranked 11th. I don't know how they came up with that. I'm assuming that there's some kind of damning pictures that the Penn state athletic department has of committee members. And that's how they got that higher ranking. I can't prove that. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just theorizing here. So please no, no libel or slander or charges, please. I'm just theorizing that this could be why they're ranked so high. <laughs> um, I have to really get past this pathological hatred of Penn State for next Yeah, I year. mean, their only losses uh, are to Michigan and Ohio State this year. So, I mean, for the majority of all things, they had a good season. They had the season, the, they had the best season they could hope for with those two losses. They were embarrassed by both of those teams embarrassed okay you can't really say that about other teams even in the pac 12 i don't think teams really got embarrassed in some of their losses might have been bad losses i don't think they got embarrassed you know but and i know i was screaming about this just a week ago 
Alabama's a better football team than Ohio State is. And it was on display in that Michigan game. It was all Wizard of Oz. You know, oh, I'm the great Ohio State. Ignore the person behind the curtain. I'm the great Ohio State. No, you're not. You, have, you, you, you're, you do great job recruiting. You've got a lot of terrific athletes. You're not a team. You're a, you're a collection of great athletes that just is too talented for a lot of the competition that you schedule or the, a lot of the competition in the Big Ten. Alabama, now you made a good point with Tennessee, but because of the injuries for Tennessee, they are no longer a better team than Alabama. What they could put on the field in a college football playoff is no longer better than Alabama. So as much as I was against, you know, having Alabama get in, the fact that USC lost, but then Ohio State snuck in, I, I, I think it's it's a travesty. If you really want the best teams in the country, Alabama is a better team than Ohio State. Interesting. That's interesting. However, I don't know if you can consider a team that slipped up twice compared to it. Now, granted, I know that they're both very short losses um, or very close losses, I should say, but they did slip up twice. They did lose the game because they were really bad on penalties, right? We've, we've talked about those with Alabama in the past. I don't know if you can consider them a overall better team than Ohio state that slipped up once, even though it was a double digit loss, just in my mind here. Now, what the committee's aspect, I guess, agrees more towards my side because it put Ohio State in. I think the committee with Ohio State and with other teams really focuses on that record. I think they don't want to have that marker of having that two loss team in the playoffs if they, if they don't have to. Now, if there was if, if something happened where they only had three one loss teams and that second team, a second loss team had to go in, then obviously they're going to have no choice. But until they don't have to put a two loss team in. I think we're going to see that next year too, with the final year of the four-year playoff. If we don't have, if there's not a reason to put a two-loss team in. They're not going to do it. It's going to be a different story when they move the twelve teams, but I don't think that's going to happen next year either. I think they're going to really try to hold that quote-unquote tradition or whatever you want to call it until that's over. That's just my thought process. I could, if they would have found a way to put Alabama in, I wouldn't have been surprised by any means. To be completely honest, Steve, I would have been a little mad just for the fact that I do think that a one loss team should be in over a two loss team, no matter what that one loss looks like, because slip ups are important. You got to find a way to finish the game. We just talked about with third ranked TCU all season long, they found a way to win the game, mm -hmm. but there was moments they saying, as soon as they get one loss, they're out of the college football playoffs. There's been talks about that all season long. Obviously that wasn't the case, but there were some talks that that happened. Well, if they would have slipped up once uh, and would we be in that same conversation uh, like we were in Ohio state, maybe they just slipped up, and didn't make it to the Big 12 championship. Did they even get a, a look into it? It's something just to keep in mind. Um, however, this is what we got. We got Georgia versus Ohio State. That could be a good game. However, it looks like some of those Ohio State players are already transferring out, some entering the draft. This could be a very – it could either be a, a heyday for Georgia or this could be a, a nice rebounding game for Ryan Day and that Ohio State Buckeye team. I'm leaning towards the first one in that case. I think Georgia takes care of Ohio State pretty well. And then for Michigan, TCU, we've already talked about this one. I'm taking Michigan. You're taking TCU. That's a game that yes. you and I are going to be very closely paying attention to. Yes, absolutely. All right. So let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about the college football rankings? Do you like them? Do you agree with them? Um, do you think that you know a, a team like Alabama should have got in over Ohio State? Do you think a team like USC should have been punished for playing in the Pac-12 championship? and losing out their four seed when Ohio State was sitting on their hands. That's another conversation we didn't talk about. Let us know all in the comment description below. And thank you for watching Slasher U.